I'm going to use an eight foot strap. And um, I usually don't tell people to buy things, um, but an eight foot or a 10 foot is going to be kind of your the better situation for being able to do a lot of different things with a strap versus a six footer. Okay. Um, normally, if you go to a store and you buy a strap, they're usually about six feet, um, which is unfortunate. Um, but if you really want to use a strap to do a lot of different things, it needs to be longer. So eight at the least, um, 10 foot is like, you know, amazing. <laughs> It's luxurious. <laughs> um, so we, we do need a block as well. And um, yeah, let's just uh, see what happens and have some fun getting uh, nerdy on the, on the strap today. We're going to start lining our back with the block and the strap. So the block will go between your thighs and I'm going to place it lengthwise so that it's not really in the way of what else is coming, which is the strap. The strap goes around the thighs and like about mid thigh and then I tighten it in. Okay, so the block is between the knees and the strap is holding all of that together and then you lie down on your back Make sure it's tight enough that if you burst out into the strap, the, you don't lose the block, okay? Now, every each thing I'm going to show you and then rest on your back once you get there, everything we're going to try is going to be a little different for each of us because of the shape of our body or our flexibility. Um, and so we're just going to play with it and calling this class becoming one with a strap. Okay, so uh, love it or hate it, you know, it gets easier in time once you understand what you're doing. But there's some great uses of each of the props. So once you have the block between the knees and the strap around your thighs, on your back, knees bent, feet on the floor, we're going to very simply squeeze the block. So I'm going to use about 30% of my energy, of my strength to squeeze the block. And just taking some deep breaths. So it's not a lot of work, just squeezing in. We're holding this for about seven seconds. And then we're going to relax. And then I'm going to push out into the strap. And this is where you want that strap tight enough that you're not going to lose the block by doing this. Okay, so I'm bursting out into the strap. This is activating outer hips. Holding that for a few more seconds. Just taking natural breaths here. Relax it. Again, squeeze the block. This works inner thighs. Try to keep your pelvis really relaxed. And conscious breathing. and relax and burst out. And we're going to just continue with this for a moment. So continue to burst out. I was thinking this morning about what we do before a yoga class because we don't have to go anywhere. We don't have to leave the house. It's a different experience than it was when we did have to leave. Relax. Squeeze back in. We, sometimes we have to do things, right? We have to work or we have an argument or <laughs> I don't know if it's a have to thing, but that happens uh, or, you know, whatever you're, you know, you maybe you have to make a phone call that may be enjoyable or stressful. Go ahead and relax. And we're going to push out one more time and hold it. Um, but just noticing what, um, being aware of what you do before yoga class and because that's going to you know, impact the class at least the first 15, 20 minutes of class, if not longer. So what you're putting into your brain, what you're putting into your body um, is going to affect how um, quickly we can drop into the practice. Okay, so just a, a thing of mindfulness there. Relax that. I'm going to keep this whole setup and I'm going to take a twist. So scooting my hips to the right, I'm going to let my knees fall to the left. And then taking the twist with the right arm extended out. 
So I still have the block between the legs and strap around and I'm just taking the twist. This is actually keeping the hips um, stacked in a nice way. I have a little bit more awareness if one leg is trying to, my top leg is trying to shift and see if I can keep them uh, really truly stacked. Just taking another deep breath. Okay, let's flip it. So I'm going to move my hips to the left a little, drop my knees to the right with my little stack here, and then bringing that shoulder down, my left shoulder down. And taking a few deep breaths. And then go ahead and release it, come back to the center. We're going to take all of these props off for just a moment. And we're going to take another twist. And this twist, uh, I need the block over to the left side. And I'm going to make the loop much bigger. Now, when we work with the strap, uh, it, we want to be able to have access to the buckle. So if the buckle's too far away or it's pressing into your leg or hip crease, it obviously is not going to feel good. So it's just a little bit of the art of the strap of <laughs> how you work with it. So strap is going to go around my left arch. Strap is going to go around my right hip. So I step my right leg through the strap until it gets up to my hip. And I'm going to twist now. So I'm going to get on my left side. I'm going to put my right knee on the block. So I have, a, I have, here's my buckle. I have access to my buckle to tighten or loosen so that I feel something. What do I want to feel? I want to feel, I'm going to twist and right arm is going to open when you get there. I'm going to push down with my left foot into the strap. I got to hold on to this right leg. If I don't hold on, the leg's going to leave me. <laughs> okay. So that's why I have it bent on the block so I can hold on to the thigh. And so when I push away with my left foot, it drops my right hip, my top hip. That's a lot of pressure on the, in the top hip crease, way up in there in the hip crease. But, you know, it's okay. I can get used to it, feeling that pressure, because that's what, uh, what I want to feel the drop of the right hip. Right hip drops because my foot, lower foot, is pushing into the strap and dropping that top hip. If it's not happening, the strap is too loose. If you can't straighten your lower leg, the strap is too tight. Okay, I'm just going to over talk about it here for a moment because when we're standing, we're going to be doing this kind of action in multiple poses. So give it just another breath or two to get used to it. If your leg starts to go numb, then we've probably stayed long enough. Okay, now I have to switch it. So to switch everything, oh, I have to switch placing my block over to the right side of my body. My right arch goes into the strap. My left leg goes through the strap because I want to get it all the way up into my hip, way up in the hip crease. Lay on the right leg, right side. Kick your left leg up onto the, the block or prop, blanket, whatever. And again, here is access to my buckle. So I can, you know, adjust, loosen or tighten. And also the buckle isn't digging into my skin. <laughs> okay. I got to hold on to the left leg. Now, one side may be different than the other. So I'm finding that I actually need to loosen my strap just a little bit on this side. I don't really know why, but I do. So... That feels more comfortable. In the twist, left arm opens. Right hand is holding on to the top leg. So this, working with the strap, 
over the computer. <laughs> it's an extra challenge today, but I know you all can handle it. So we're giving it a try. Pushing down to the lower foot to traction, to pull the left hip down. This is an action I'm kind of always telling you to do in a lot of poses, but here the strap is giving you that tactile awareness of it. Okay, gently, let's let it go. And we come back to center. Okay, so I don't need the block, at least for a moment. I'm gonna make my loop smaller so that it can be shoulder width because it's going around my wrists. Okay, so I just made it shorter. Now, shoulder width, if that feels like it's too tight because your shoulders are really tight, go just a little wider than shoulder width. Knees bent, feet on the floor. So arms are straight up towards the sky and bursting the strap. Oh, I actually forgot. We are going to use the block. Sorry. It's worth it. Can you grab your block too? <laughs> so um, what I wanted to do here, which I almost forgot there, was to do kind of what we just did with the um, legs of hugging and bursting. So I have to make this strap loop, this is probably the harder thing to do here. I have to make this strap loop tight enough that I can hold onto this block and not drop the block on my face. <laughs> we didn't sign any waivers. <laughs> okay, don't drop the block on your face. <laughs> okay, so there I am, arms up, straight up towards the sky, holding onto the block and have the strap around the wrists. We're gonna do this one first. Once you're there, just squeeze the block, okay? As you squeeze the block, take the arms over your head, alongside your ears, but of course, stop at any point if there's resistance in one or both of your shoulders. Keep squeezing the block and bring the arms back up, straight up towards the sky. Just do that again, squeezing the block with your hands, take the arms over your head without arching your rib cage. We've done this standing, which is a lot harder, and bring the arms back straight up. Now, if you can still hold the block, burst the strap. If you can't, of course, you can put the block down. Burst the strap. Keep bursting the strap as you stretch the arms over your head. Now, today I have a little resistance on my left shoulder, and so because of that, I'm gonna not take my arms too far over the head because I don't wanna go into the strain. Okay, I'm gonna to start to coax it open, not force it. Burst the strap, come back straight up towards the sky. Do it one more time. Burst and reach arms over any amount. And burst and arms come back up. And just one of each. Squeeze the block. Arms go over your head as you squeeze. Squeeze the block as the arms come straight back up. Burst the strap, arms go over the head, bursting. And burst the strap, the arms come back up. Good, and now relax that. Okay, now you can take the block off to the side. Thank you for humoring me on that. All right, and now we're gonna go back to what we were trying to do, which was appropriate width of the strap for you. I keep getting a fold in my strap. There we go. So same thing, it's around the wrists, but this time we're only bursting out. Okay, legs up in the air. Some of us have bent legs. We've done this lots of times where we just dip one toe away and it comes back in, switching the legs each time or the legs are straight up in the air. So I'm gonna let the right leg go away and reach the arms over the head, bursting the strap. The leg comes back up and my arms go back up towards the sky. The left leg goes away and the arms reach over, bursting the strap. The leg comes up, the arms go back up towards the sky. Again, right leg away, reach and burst the strap. Leg up, arms up. Left leg away, arms over, bursting the strap, stretch through your fingers and bring it back up 
and relax. Okay, feet as wide as the mat, windshield wipers. Just place the strap to the side as you let your legs rock side to side, okay? Let's see what else we got on the list. Okay, I think we'll save that one. Let's go ahead and either roll to the side to sit up or rock up. And so this one is a little hard for tighter hamstrings, so you can sit on a prop. And you can also work with the knees bent, okay? So I fix my clothing here. The big loop of the strap. And it goes around the feet. Pashimots or, or, or actually it's Dandasana. So strap around the feet. You doesn't even need to be a loop necessarily, but I'm going to hold on. Okay, so the feet are about hip width apart. And holding on to the strap, sitting up really tall, squeeze the shoulder blades onto the back. Dandasana staff pose. Again, sit up on a height if you need, or do this with the knees bent, the knees and the toes flexing straight up. Holding on to the strap so that you can help get the body straight up and down, and then squeeze the shoulder blades onto the back. Good. Nice toes, Bob. <laughs> so stay there for another couple of breaths. Push, pushing out with the feet, yeah, spreading to the toes, shoulder blades on the back. Okay, so these next couple ones um, are just to help with an idea of an action. It could be a little confusing, so again, bear with it. I have my loop, okay? And we're gonna come to a low lunge with the right leg forward. And I have my loop in my hand. Now, uh, opposite of the buckle, right? The loop part, <laughs> this loop. <laughs> is going to be on the inside of my thigh. So I go under the leg, right leg, and I'm gonna like do a little lasso of my thigh, <laughs> okay? So I have the loop here, the loop side on the inside of my leg. I'm going to thread the right side into the loop and then I'm gonna tighten it. <laughs> and so the idea is that I have this loop around the thigh. I've threaded the right side into the loop to the left, and then I pull to the right, which tightens this all around my leg. I'm just standing so you can see it. Um, I'm gonna move this kind of looped area here inside the leg a little bit more. So when I pull to the right, it's rolling my thigh to the right. That's the action I wanna feel in the fascia, okay, in the skin and the thigh. I'll pull that way. Okay, do your best with it. <laughs> Again, this is maybe the more harder one to explain. But while I'm in the low lunge, I'm going to pull down towards the floor. Outside, right hand to the strap, pulling down towards the floor. So this is externally rotating the thigh. Okay. And I can lunge in and take the left arm to the sky. What am I trying to gain here? <clears throat> I'm trying to feel the drop of the right hip. If I don't have the strap or I don't understand it, just grab a hold of your right hip crease and pull the skin out and down. That's essentially what's happening. We're pulling out and down, rotating the tissue of the thigh downward to drop the right hip. A couple more breaths since we worked so hard to get there. We're gonna keep this position with the strap, but we're gonna change our position to high lunge. So you might want to block underneath the left hand, otherwise your fingertips are to the floor. Straighten the back leg, high lunge. Now, pull the strap 
back, straight back behind you. So we're trying some, you know, and I've pulled out in class the the um, the, the the wooden stick. Okay, <laughs> and I see it would see if your hips were square. When I'm pulling straight back, this is squaring my hips more by drawing the right hip behind me. So can I keep that action and take the twist? Right arm up to the sky. Right arm up, twisting. While keeping the same action, I just gave the leg. And then we're going to stand up in warrior two, keep the strap. Warrior two, bending the right leg. And I'm going to pull with my right hand down again, down on the strap. Pull down. Again, if you're not using the strap, just use your hand to grab the thigh and rotate it externally. Whew. Okay. Give it a pull down. Again, mark it and then extend your arms out to the sides. Good. And gently release it. And we're going to switch sides. So when you come down, just take the strap off of your leg. Free that tourniquet. <laughs> release the tourniquet. And switch the legs. Left leg is now forward. My loop goes inside the leg. Around the left, underneath the left thigh. Get my loop. Thread the left side into the right side. So outside to the inside. And then pull out to the left to tighten. Move that loop more inside of the leg so that when you pull out, you actually get the resistance, <laughs> okay? We're in high, uh, low lunge first, right arm to the sky. Again, if you're not using the strap, you're just going to roll and drop down. So push into the hip crease down with the leg that if we can get this action in the strap. I usually have to, you know, sometimes I sit there and confuse myself with the strap on this one for a minute. <laughs> so I'm pulling down, pulling down. I want to feel the drop of the left hip. This is how we create more space in the pelvis, which gives freedom for the low back, the sacral area, and the breath. And then the high lunge, straighten the back leg. Now pull straight back towards your back foot. This squares the hip, moving the left sitting bone square to the right sitting bone. These are actions you want to be able to do without the strap, but here giving it a little guidance, then twist, left arm to the sky, Keep feeling the left hip drawing back in space. And warrior two. Come up. Left leg is bent. I'm rolling back and down. Now my, my body's leaning, right? I'm not in my full warrior two pose because I'm working my leg first, rolling externally with the thigh and down from the outside. Once I feel that rotation happen and the drop in the hip, then arms out to the sides, full warrior two, taking a couple breaths, trying to still feel that rotation out and down on the left thigh. and gently release. Okay, go ahead and just take the strap off the leg right here. We're going to try one more with warrior two. So, a shortened stance a little bit. 
uh, your loop is going to be dependent, the size of it's dependent on your body here. So I'm going to put the strap around my body. For warrior two, we're going to go back to the right side. The strap is hitting my left outer hip. Uh, I'm actually like above my outer, my hip bone. And then it goes around the right knee. Here's access to my buckle. So as I drop into warrior two, as low as I can go, <laughs> I will now be held by the strap from the strap around the left hip right below the top of the hip pelvis here and are looped underneath the right knee. Now first I don't feel anything. Maybe I need to go tighter. But how I'm going to feel the strap work is if I burst the strap in both directions. You can take your arms wide once you've got it. So I have to push into the strap with my left hip and my right knee and then the arms can float out to the sides once you get it. So this makes me take a longer stance because I have support to hold me. And then I resist into the strap, especially with the left outer hip pushed into the strap. This centers you more in the middle of warrior two. We often angle the pelvis and lean forward the strap is saying the only way this is going to work is if you push back with your left hip into the strap, which brings you into a much greater awareness of both legs working, not just the front leg working. Take another breath, smile. It's, it's about to be over. Okay, and then switch sides. From the outer right hip to the left knee, underneath the knee. Again, my legs are a little different, so on this side, I have to tighten the strap a little bit. And then once I got that in the place that seems to work for me on this outer hip on the right, I got to burst immediately into both to figure out if it's the right length of the strap. And once you've got it, you open your arms. So the back leg of warrior two, as well as a lot of the other um, uh, standing poses, misses actions, okay. So here, because you have to burst into the strap that's around your right hip, it's going to bring a ton of awareness to how back leg is participating in the pose. And taking just another breath, um, and then go ahead and release it. I won't make you stay there. Or go ahead and shake out your legs. Take the strap off of your legs. Wide angle pose with the loop around the arches. If your strap is very small, <laughs> your loop, your distance between your legs might be short. It doesn't have to be like the widest you always go. So, <laughs> but the idea is once it's around your arches, you're going to burst out. Now, if you do it from standing and you burst out into your feet as you forward fold, you might find something very interesting. Okay. <laughs> uh, especially if you often have tension in your uh, low back you might have less tension when you fold forward, bursting the strap, maybe, okay? So while I'm in the forward fold, I'm gonna keep pushing out into the strap, bursting the strap for just another couple moments, okay? Because we're putting so much emphasis on the feet and on the strap right now, just be cautious to not hyperextend your knees. And let's hang out for a few more breaths here. I'm going to still lean forward towards the front of my feet without gripping the toes. I'm going to keep bursting the strap to wake up those legs. 
It's okay if the knees are bent. It's okay if the body's more parallel to the floor. Now, I want to burst the strap while I stand up without hyperextending the knees all the way back up to stand. And then as you release it, shake your legs out a little bit. Okay. For something familiar, a smaller loop, shoulder width apart, or maybe a little more if you're tighter, behind the back, around the wrists. So just gonna stand about hip width or so, maybe wider if that feels good, and the strap is around the wrists, behind the back. Shoulder blades squeeze together, elbows are bent, and then burst the strap. Spread through the fingers, and burst the strap. Make sure the neck is soft, not tensing. I have a bend in the elbows. Shoulders and elbows are squeezing back. Fingers are stretching, wrists are bursting the strap. You're welcome to stay here for the last few breaths. Other ways, take a forward fold. I'm gonna let my elbows straighten a little bit. I am going to continue to burst the strap. Stay upright if this is too many things to work at once. Just keep stretching through your fingers. Keep squeezing your shoulder blades together and keep bursting the strap. One more, two more breaths. Keep bursting as you stand up. Burst, 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 burst. And then relax. So keep holding the strap in one hand, but just shake your arms out a little bit. Okay, let's do one more for the arms here. Um, don't worry about the strap or the loop, just let it be where it is. Standing cow face pose arms. So I uh, just did this with Laura the other day. So the strap is gonna be held in my left hand from above and I'm dropping it down so my right hand can find it. Instead of bringing the hands close together, what we're going to do is Pull down with the right hand, with the lower hand. When you pull down, you should feel that in the left arm, the top arm. Okay, What's the rest of the body doing? Tadasana, standing nice and tall. So I'm just going to give a little pull down to stretch top arm. Hmm. And breathe. Each thing we do, work within where you're at. Don't force. If you feel resistance, back off. Just enough, yeah? Now pull up. Pull up with the left hand on the strap, which glides the right arm higher up the back. Still standing nice and tall, Tadasana. And gently release the arms, shake them out a little bit, and we're just gonna switch sides. So I hold the strap in my right hand from above, drop it down, left arm goes behind the back, finds the strap, and I'm gonna pull down on the strap with my lower hand to stretch my upper arm. And now pull up. Breathe into the back arm. And gently release it and shake out your arms. So if you don't have two straps, you might have to use um, a shirt or a tie or 
scarf <laughs> um, because uh, or we can you know skip this idea but I'm going to put the loop around my left foot and I've made the loop big again and I'm going to step my right leg through it and get it up into the hip crease Ooh, I could also do this with a bent leg just holding the right thigh there we go if you can't get the foot Okay. Why I said two straps is because I've got one for my leg, my lower leg, but then how am I going to get my foot, right, if I can't grab the big toe? But you can do this with the bent leg as well and hold the thigh. So this is exactly like we did lying down when we did the twist. The strap is around my left foot. <clears throat> I stepped my right leg through so it's in the hip crease. If you're already there, stick with it. I have the buckle available to tighten or loosen if I didn't get a good position right away, if I didn't luck out, okay? Holding the foot, the strap around the foot, or with a bent leg holding the thigh. What I want to feel is the same thing I wanted to feel lying down in that twist, is I want to feel the right hip dropping. And the right hip is dropping because of the perfect amount of resistance. <clears throat> Okay, if you are trying it with the legs straight, that is out in front of you. Shoulder blades on the back. Last couple of breaths. Again, just marking in your body brain this feeling that what this is doing is dropping the right hip, which creates more space in the hip. It forces us to get more of a, a, a better stretch for like the hamstrings and the leg and not hiking up the right side of the hip to do the pose. Okay, shake it out and switch sides. So we can easily go hip up, I'm there, right? And we're trying to keep hip down. So step on it with the right foot, bring your left leg through the loop, up into the hip crease. Make sure the buckle is not trapped in your hip crease, okay? Again, I think my legs one leg shorter than the other. I don't know what's going on. Got to make a little more room for this side. <laughs> Holding the thigh, using the strap around the foot, or grabbing the big toe. This is tricky for a balance. So, if you need something to hold on to with your right hand, your other hand, go for it. So when we're doing a class like we did on Saturday, which was more higher energy, we moved a little faster through poses, you're taking with you all these little breakdowns of the poses with you into more of a flow class. Whether the class is moving fast or slow, can you still you know, have the memory of these actions in the body so that there's um, a safety and also you're working more efficiently in the body? Go ahead and let it go, shake it out. All right, for the legs. Okay, all right. We got the last two standing here as triangle into half moon. I still need the same big loop of my strap. I go around the right arch. I step my left leg through. But now, the exact same thing. It's up in the hip crease to the foot. But now I'm in triangle pose, okay? So we're going over the left leg. I'm going to use this the, um, block. <clears throat> and what I did was I have that buckle somewhere where, you know, we're not going to get too picky today on this, but wherever the, the, it is, you can still tighten or loosen. You know, it's not way down there by your other foot. Okay, root through the back foot, placing the hand on the floor or the block. And if you don't feel something right away, tighten. What do I want to feel now is the crease of the left hip angling the left sitting bone to the right inner thigh. Be very conscientious to not hyperextend the front knee. If you're not sure that you can stop it from doing it, we've put the block on an angle behind the front calf before. So it becomes a block, a blocker, 
right? So it's, it stops the leg from hyperextending. If you need that, add it. So if I have the strap and it's helping me and I feel it's rooting, I have a little more freedom, the rest of my body, to lengthen. We're going to take this exact same position, but into half moon. So the strap might fall, so take care to hold on to it. Shorten the stance, stand into the left leg, and up goes the right leg behind you, half moon. Again, if the, if the strap is slack, it's not doing anything, you got to tighten it. And then this is a pretty awesome pose. <laughs> Push really hard back with your right foot to feel the crease in the left hip. Again, watch to not hyperextend the lower knee. Take three more breaths. The anchor of the back leg. Gently release it, shake it out. Let me do the other side. <laughs> Didn't know your legs were going to work so hard today, huh? All right, on my other side, left foot into the loop. Right leg steps through, so the strap is up in my hip crease. Triangle. Watch to not hyperextend the front leg. Again, I have to tighten once I'm in that pose so I can feel the resistance and push with the back foot. There's your anchor, triangle. Either placing the right hand on the block or the floor, or if you tried the block on an angle behind the right calf, use that to help you to not hyperextend. With all of that stability because of the strap and the back foot, you can lengthen the torso with more freedom. Like I always say, don't be frustrated with the props. Once you use them enough, you can use them really quickly. It doesn't take a ton of time to get it to the right positioning. Half moon. You want to hold that strap so I don't drop it. Left foot, push back, push back, push back, push back. As the leg lifts. If the strap falls off your foot on the way back, maybe you weren't pushing enough with the back leg. Okay, half moon, left arm to the sky. 5% bend in the standing knee so you don't hyperextend, but let the hip go back towards the foot that's in the air. Use the back foot. Again, if you're not using the strap now, or if you're not using the strap in general, you want to feel this action, the, how much you have to use the back foot and the crease of the hip to lengthen the torso. One more breath. And gently release it. Oh, I keep losing my camera. All right, go ahead and shake it out. I know, maybe it'll come back. And there it goes, okay. <laughs> Um, sometimes I'm just tired of the technology. Let's come down. Woo. <laughs> okay, chaturanga with the strap. We're almost, we're almost there. Chaturanga with the strap means that the strap is around your upper arm, just above your elbow. Now I just put it on the wrong way because the buckle is going to touch my skin. I want the buckle forward so that I'm not putting that buckle right under my rib cage. So this is, once you get that loop shoulder width apart, you want it to be able to take your arms into the chaturanga position and they cannot go wider than shoulder width apart because the strap is locking you in. You can do this on your knees or you can do it in the full plank. I have to go forward so I can get below my chest so I can sit on the strap. If you haven't done this before, try it with the knees down first. If it's too much on the wrist for today, skip it. 
I have my elbows stacked above my wrists. I have my shoulders squeezing on my back. And I need to come in and out of the pose as many times as I need to until I get stronger to hold it. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So in and out a few times or holding it. I've leaned forward so the strap is below the chest. And I am sitting on it. I'm really putting my weight into it. Shoulders on the back, head long. Okay, I think that's the longest I've ever held that. <laughs> Go ahead and come out when you're ready. <laughs> and cool the arms off. So we want Chaturanga to be like that. Yeah, should we try Chaturanga not holding it that long without the strap? <laughs> okay. So you might hold Chaturanga for one to three breaths, but no strap. Chaturanga. Can you make it exactly the same without the strap? One, two, three, and rest. <laughs> okay, much harder, yeah? <laughs> but that, that's the line we want the body at. Okay, shake your wrists out. Okay, let's do one, foot, one thing for the toes and then we'll take an inversion. See if we can squeak out these last couple things. <laughs> okay, so uh, Dandasana, I'm making a little tiny baby loop to go around my big toes. The strap is much bigger than my toes, but that's okay. Okay, the loop is around the big toes. If you have, um, if the toes have the bunions, yeah, and their, their big toes are falling inwards, this is a really great pose. Dandasana, staff pose. I may be sitting up higher on a prop. You might have your knees bent. Otherwise, legs are straight. Squeeze your thighs in towards each other, but burst the, your toes out into the strap. And all your other toes will most likely spread too. And if they're not, spread them. Conscious breathing. So you have positioned your body in a way that you can be here. Okay, so that's with sitting up higher or bending your knees to relieve any um, tightness in the hamstrings. And I'm pushing my legs really strongly into the floor. I'm squeezing my legs into each other and I'm bursting the strap with my toes. Five more breaths. and gently relax. Remove that little strap. <laughs> okay, we're gonna take an inversion. If you are safe to go up into headstand with both legs together, you're gonna put the strap around the thighs and then you're gonna go up in headstand. Now please use a wall if you, have not, if you haven't done it also with a strap around your legs. Otherwise, we're gonna come into supported bridge. So. When I come to supported bridge, I'm gonna sit on the block at whatever height works for me. And the strap has to go around my legs. Maybe I put it, I couldn't figure out which one I wanted to do first. So I'm gonna try putting the strap around my legs first. Tighten my legs in enough. Lift up, put the block underneath there. Then legs up into the air and tighten the strap until the legs are totally locked in. So the straps around the thighs. Otherwise, you're doing the exact same strap position, but in headstand. Okay. Which again, to me, that means your legs have to go up at the same time. So please be careful if you're working that. If I'm in supported bridge, squeeze the shoulders underneath, puff the chest. The strap is squeezing your legs together. And you're gonna spread your toes in the same way you just did with the strap around the toes. 
and breathe. Stay there. If you're working the headstand, great. Just take your time. Be slow. Be mindful. Kind of funny to move around with your legs strapped together. And just for a little bit longer, can you push out into the strap a little bit? Different action, right? Push out, burst the strap a little. And then squeeze in so that the strap might almost even slacken because you're hugging in so much. So if you're in supported bridge, you might loosen the strap a little bit so you can get your feet back down to the floor and take the block out. If you're in headstand, bend or straight legs, again, obviously they have to go together. Oops. <laughs> and then you can remove the strap from wherever you're at. And if you're on your back straight, uh, be kneeling or child's pose if you came out of headstand. If you're on your back, take your time to roll to one side and come up to sit. Hmm. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do here before we come down onto our backs is camel. Okay, so Ustrasana, usually we put a block between the thighs. We're going to stick with the strap, but we, we can go, um, you, can, you can work it two ways. One way is kind of how we started, which was block between the thighs and strap around the thighs or just work with the strap because we're going to be squeezing in. So if you squeeze in without a block in there, the idea is you slightly, slightly slacken the strap, right? So you don't, you're not pushing out into the strap. The strap is just containing you. And you're even just slightly hugging in so that the strap doesn't have to do all the work to contain your parallel position. If I put a block in there, I also have something to hold on to, okay? So I'm just containing. Camel, Ustrasana. Toes can be curled under, feet can be flat. Lift the heart, squeeze the shoulder blades on the back. You might keep this small, just like this, or place the hands on the heels as you open up the heart. So the idea is that the strap contains you so you can't go wider and also you hug in a little bit don't make the strap do all the work hug in as you lift your chest your head follows sit back for just a breath okay Let's try it one more time. Take five breaths in the pose. Again, contained. You also hug in. Keep it small by keeping the chin to the chest, hands on the hips, or bringing the hands back. Great. And don't let the strap do all the work. You hug in too. Again, inhale, heart up, and then let's release all of these props from our legs. <laughs> Good. On your back, once you get that off of there. We're going to go back to, um, ran out of time, so we're going to go back to this, the twist we did with the big loop at the beginning. So we're doing something familiar. From the left foot, I'm going to take the twist with my right leg going through, 
all the way into the hip crease. I place my right thigh on the block, bent leg, or you can hold the foot for straight leg. My left hand needs to hold my right top leg so it doesn't go with the strap. <laughs> if I didn't make it tight enough, again, I have access to the buckle. I just tightened it just a little bit more. So when I twist, right arm open, and I push down and out with my lower foot, it tractions the right hip down. And just a few breaths here. You can hold the foot if you have the leg straight, otherwise you're holding the thigh, knee area. Okay, so we're just going to switch the sides. Oops. Foot into, right foot into the strap. Left leg comes through the strap, up into the hip crease. I want to use the block underneath my left knee. Hold on to the top leg with the right hand as you twist. If you find one side's different than the other, you need to change the length of the strap loop. I'm going to pull down with that lower foot in order to traction the hip. Self-tractioning isn't easy, <laughs> okay, but it's worth trying it. Inhaling to release it. Okay. So, I'm going to take this loop now for Shavasana just around the ankles. I'm going to tighten it in until my, I don't want to make it too, too, too tight. But, I want it to be tight enough that it kind of holds my feet. So what I'm going to do for Shavasana here is the straps just around the ankles. And this is a, I'm able to actually separate my feet just a little bit. Okay, they're not like slammed into each other. <laughs> okay, because what this is is a very subtle opening. If I'm going to turn my feet inward, so more than parallel, like pigeon toed, rotating my thighs inward. And then this is a fascially opening. I'm going to then relax my legs and let my feet kind of fall apart to where they want to within the confines of that strap. So the strap is just there, not too tight. Um, tuck or draw inward internal rotation of the thighs and the feet and then relax and they just kind of fall where they want to fall. Roll the shoulders under and turn the palms up, Shavasana. So this is not, not so tight that it's not comfortable, but it's, um, kind, again, it's a containment around the legs. And as your legs relax and relax and relax, the slide of your foot and your leg kind of opening rides against, glides against the strap. This is not something you're doing. It's just going to happen by relaxing. And that creates like a little fascial stretch or unwinding as the strap and the leg kind of glide past each other. So a non-doing position. Relax.
Out of a great need, we are holding hands and climbing. Out of a great need, we are holding hands and climbing. Not loving is a letting go. Listen, the terrain around here is far too dangerous for that. Out, out of great need, we are holding hands and climbing. Not loving is a letting go. Listen, the terrain around here is far too dangerous for that. Out of a great need, we are holding hands and climbing. Taking your time to draw the knees in as you roll to your side so you can get the strap off of your ankles. And then take your time to come up to seated. Thank you for playing with the strap today for those things that were familiar, maybe those things that were new. And let's bring the hands to the heart, Anjali Mudra, as we bow in, remembering we are all in this together. Holding hands and climbing together. Now is not the time to let go of each other's hands. Thank yourself for your practice and your presence. May all beings and all worlds find happiness and peace. Namaste.